Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Today we're painting this really cute uh, wooly little lamb. I go over how to draw this and paint this step by step. But if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable. Um, if you're not a Patreon member, check out the link in the description box and my about page and you will find out more about Patreon. I have ad free videos and traceables over there from YouTube and exclusively on Thursdays, I have exclusive videos tutorials on uh, there. Um, also, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, to start, I'm going to go over how to draw the little cute sheep. Um, if you're a Patreon member, you can just download my traceable. Um, it's there. Um, if you're not, we'll just talk about how to draw sheep in the shape. Basically, his body is going to be kind of like a rounded rectangle. Of course, we're gonna we're gonna embellish this better, but basically a rounded rectangle like that, right? And then the head is gonna come up here. So you can stop by making a circle where the head would be, but we're not gonna actually have a circle. So we're gonna have a elongated head. So it's kind of like a curve down and then curve back. See that? It's like a, like a curved out U with ears. Ears are like leaves. Think of leaves, how we draw leaves and then connect it. So we're just putting a circle kind of where we want the head because we want a connection here, just like that. And then we're gonna put that U we talked about, see? And then the little leaf, so it's a curve up, curve back, and then another curve, another curve, and you got his little face kind of shape. And then for the nose, it's just like this curve U and line down in the middle and then a little one on the bottom and then the side eye is like curved let me zoom in a little bit so it's a curved on the side a curved li uh, line and then another one to connect it for the eye and same thing over here and we'll just kind of color that in and a lot of this is going to be just coloring in color and that's the bird the body and of course the body you're going to have these little it's wool so it's going to have these little squiggly kind of fur coming out of here and then the legs, gonna start like one fourth way in, kind of coming downward, and then downward again. And then for his big old leg in the back, you're gonna have this curved kind of section here. See, like that. His leg will kind of wing out, curve out a little bit, and then down. And then we have his little leglet. <laughs> they call it leglets, but. And then the grass will all be here. And then we'll have the the curved sheep body. Voila. And we'll do a lot of sketching with this. And then, we, of course, we're going to have this grass all in here. And that's kind of basically how the lamb should look. I mean, you want a more detailed lamb, you can just download the traceable. But just go in like this. There's a lot of lamb pictures everywhere. That's how I draw a lamb. Doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's almost similar. I, I, I probably curved this part of the body down a little bit and made it a little bit longer. It's similar, right? He's got his little big leg here that we curved out and curved down. Just like that. I'm actually using just like a number two pencil on my, um, this is the Arches 100% Cotton Cold Press Paper. And with this particular exercise, I want to keep the pencil. You know, sometimes we erase it all the time. I'm going to be keeping them. I'm going in and I'm adding in the pencil marks. You know, all the little shading, little detail. Because I want them. So this is a new way of doing, you know, some watercolor. We're going to be adding all the shady pencil marks. And the eye. Right? And then the ears will be dark in the inside. See, you can see me flushing out the, the lamb. And I'll have a lighter pencil towards where it's lighter. Dark, dark see, I'm just going down in here. I'm putting in these um, folds of his woolly wool, woolly wool, 
Willy Wonka. Just like that. Mm, have fun with this. You know, put in some nice shadowing with your pencil. This is his back leg. And it's going to be in the shadow. So I'm going to add the pencil in here as a shadow. Just hold it on its side and kind of wiggle it like that. Put some little marks on his body. It has a really nice, pretty look to it when you use a pencil. Sporadically, like I'm doing here, see, putting in all the marks. Just has this really nice, kind of make an antique kind of quality to it. And under here will be much darker on his leg. This is his other leg. And then you can just throw in some of the grass. So for the grass, um, we're going to be painting that grass in, but I want to keep some light grass and it's going to be some shadow under here. So I would suggest taking some of your uh, I'm probably blanking out on you guys. I was just taking, <laughs> sorry, the masking fluid and just grabbing a cheap old skinny brush and we're going to just wisp in some of these grasses with the masking fluid. See I'm just kind of putting in the grasses because I want some lighter ones in here. And I'm going to put a shade darkness going here and then you're not going to be able to see it. So I want to be able to see the grass. So I'm just taking this brush and I'm wisping in some grasses where I want it to show. You can notice that it's going along this line here because it's going to have some shading along this line. Just do that. You don't have to do it everywhere. Just some nice wisps of the grass here and there. If you want to just keep using the pencil, this number two pencil, and sh just putting in the outer lines and some grasses back here. Because we did the, we just did the sheep. We want to put in some more pencil lines in here and down in here. So it's consistently, it doesn't look like this weird, just this random drawing in the middle of the pa painting. It's just, you want to have consistency with the design. So I'm just wisping in some grasses, just like this. But mostly it's the highlight of the sheep, the ship. What is a one sheep called? Sheep? Still sheep? I think it's sheep plural, sheep singular, right? Um, I'm sure somebody's going to correct me. <laughs> So here I'm just filling this in, put a little more shadow down in here with the pencil. It just has a nice look to it, just a lot different than just a typical watercolor design. And again, throwing the pencil in here where the grasses are, some big ones, some tall ones. La, la, la. Have fun with it guys. Don't get stuck up on if it looks a certain way or not, just enjoy painting and drawing. This is kind of a drawing slash painting tutorial. So there we go. Smile. Smile for the camera. Just a sheep. Okay. All right, so once you continue, once you finish your drawing, you know, on this paper, we're gonna start working with paints. I have my water jars, paper towels, I have paint brushes. I'll probably be using my Princeton eight long round mostly um, to wash in color. I can grab my bigger brush. I have these really nice big floppy brushes. I have this great Princeton number six Neptune, Princeton number 12 Neptune. Look at that, this guy's really nice and big. Um, so for the background, I don't want to make a serious background. I'm just going to do a simple blue. For the sheep, um, I want to make him like tan, beigey kind of colors, pretty colors. You can do a little gray. So I've got Van Dyke Brown here. I've got my Grumbacker. I'm using the Grumbacker because I just, now that I grabbed it, I might as well just put my hands on it. <laughs> um, I've got the Cabin Yellow Deep. I'm going to make some like nice, pretty beige tones. 
going to mix a little gray with that. I always kind of test it out on my paper towel. And that's too yellow, obviously. I'm going to grab some of this magenta. I'm playing around with adding color. Just keep going until I feel like I have the color that I'm looking for. It's more of a brown, which is good. I'm gonna grab some more of these colors. It's always good to mix them all up. Maybe a little indigo too. Let's see what we got here. Bluish brown for the tan beigey color. I might grab some of this yellow deep magenta. See, it's pretty yellow, a little blushy kind of color, and then throw in a little gray. Tone it down. We got more of that pinky color. Okay, so we've got a few colors, and then I've got some gray on the other side of my um, palette here that's hard to see. You can't see everything. So I'll be playing around mixing like a whole bunch of these together. So I've watered it down because I want it pretty light. And I'm just going to flush in some of these colors. See? Just going to put it in right over that pencil mark. Just like this. Just dabbing in the color. I'm squiggling the paintbrush. I might leave a little white here and there. See, already it looks like a nice little wash. I'm just going to keep filling this in. Grab some of that gray. Going up over in here where it's darker. See, this part's going to be lighter. Just gonna fill this in. Gonna have a shadow right here because his head's turned, so it's gonna leave kind of a shadow right in here. See, I'm just tapping it in. Tap, tap, tap. I might take the tip of this brush and go out a little bit with this, make some marks because it's wool. So it's kind of like wiggly, squirrely kind of fur hanging out of there. Again, I'm going in some of the pretty color beige. It's like yellowish pink. Kind of blushy kind of color. I'm going to keep flushing this in. This is what's fun about the pencil. It kind of helps you. It's kind of like a cheat if you think about it. So you don't have to do and paint all the different kinds of tones. You can just use that. And then I'm going to put this color down in here and then the legs. Sometimes the cheats are fun. I'm going back in and adding some grays under here. Again, take the brush and just push out some of the paint for the fur. There's a bunch of grays, brown grays, blue grays. Again, I'm just going to blend that in here, put some in the folds coming down here and then tap it in around here. So I'm just kind of tap, 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 tap. Let's get the different tones of his body. And we're not going to keep playing around with that. And I'll keep adding some darker co colors up by the face. Because remember, he's in the shadow of here because his head's turned. So we're just going to add some of that, and then under here, just a little bit, not too much in the body. Here I'm really going to wash out the color, because I really want it lighter. I want color out here, but I want it really light. See, much lighter than there. And then a little color up in here. We're going to leave this area kind of white and flush in around the ears. It's got like a white base. And like I see, I'm just tapping the color in. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. While it's still wet on wet. Tap, tap, tap. 
it's a lot of fun. So once you draw it, you don't have this intimidation of like, you know, color and you're just tapping. I'm tapping on different grays. Tap, tap, tap. It's just going to blend nicely. And I'll just kind of keep adding a little more color because it's going to dry pretty light. So just going to keep adding some color in here. And then I'll tap in again some darker colors, the shadow of his body back here. And then I'll wisp out some of the, you know, go in and tweak that in a bit. But basically, look at because of the drawing, it kind of could be done right now if you wanted to. You can go in and tweak it a little more, adding some darker tones. Just right in here. Like I said, and then a little bit even more coming out over in here. You play around with it. You know? So now we're going to go down to this area that we have here. I want to do some greens, and then we're going to have browns in here too. So I'm going to take those same browns because it's kind of been like a brown field. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, mix a little gray. Can even have a little indigo in there. Gives it a more of a brown gray kind of look. This part of the field is going to be that typical bright, pretty, I made a mess, but like that yellow um, wheat field. So I'm going to mix up this yellow, cabin yellow deep. I mix some some magenta. I got a little bit of brown. I tested it on my brush. I mean, on my paper towel to see if I like the color, and it's pretty much what I want. I'm going to lighten it up with more water, and we're just going to wash in. Maybe add a touch of brown. Some of that yellow color here. Just washing it in right across underneath the body here and over in here. Gotta kind of move a little fast with this. So and if it looks kind of sloppy, don't freak out. So moving kind of fast. We're gonna lighten that even still. We're gonna get water and put it next to it going up here because you want it lighter even still so it's kind of faded out here and then up in here we want some green grays so I've got the um, olive green I'm mixing some indigo and a little gray a little black a little gray so it's a green gray we're going to put some of that right up in here a green kind of color just a little bit over here too and as we get closer to this we want to take away some of that color so I'm going to take off the paint on my brush dab my paper towel and just grab the paint and kind of trying to blend them like that grab some of this yellow blend them and this part's going to be kind of white in here and you can add some blue grays or grays up in here, just like that, the background. So while this is still drying down here, we can add in some of the dark green grays right where the shadow is. That's why I had that shadow. That's why I painted the um, masking fluid. We want some deep shadow in here. Just a little in here, just some green. We'll be painting some brown, wispy grasses going on top of it. But right now we're just putting this deep color in here. It's almost like a bluish green. So adding some indigo, some dark gray. So it's just really dark right around where he is. And then I'm gonna go back in and grab that mustardy yellow add some that Van Dyke brown to it I'm gonna go back in here we're wisping in some color here so you can see the uh, where the masking fluid was we will be going back over this with some 
rounds. I'm just going back in here and filling in the spots that were white on the side. Oops, I got a little red in there, but that's okay. See, I'm just kind of filling all those colors in. Don't get bogged down if this is blending and bleeding. That's kind of what we wanted to do. And like I said, again, you can go back in and add some even deeper color for the shadow. See, I added some dark, dark green. I added the gouache. I use olive gouache and olive green watercolor. But I did the gouache with the indigo and a little bit of the Van Dyke brown and get that really nice dark, intense color. And while this is still damp, it's going to blend nicely if you wanted to lean it up and blend down even more. But that's kind of the look we were going for. Again, back here, I want to keep it really pale. I don't want it really dark back here. I want it kind of dark on the front. We can start going in and grabbing some of this yellow ochre kind of color. Mix, put it in there. Gonna have blend it up a little bit. We want it lighter up in here under his body. Oops, clean up that. All right, so we can't really paint anymore on that section. We want it to dry. You can try and grab some concentrated paint and go up, but it's just gonna blend. See, it's just gonna bleed. We're gonna do the grasses in a bit, but it's just gonna bleed at this point. So what I suggest is just let it dry and you can come back. And meanwhile, you can kind of work and tweak the lamy lamb. So like I said, again, just go in and grab some. It's gonna dry lighter. You can go back in and add, again, some deeper tones, which I'm doing here. And this fur, not too much though. You know, he's gotta stand out a little bit. He is after all, the center of attention here. So I'm going in and putting in his legs. And some darker colors. Just kind of tapping it in. See, I'm just kind of moving it around. I wouldn't, uh, if you want to get a small brush like this Princeton number four, go in and make a darker eye. You don't have to really do that. I'll take the tip of it and I'll just kind of fill in this eye. Nice dark gray. And the nose and the mouth and a little eye back here. It's just gonna pull it out a little more. And then you can water down some of that gray and go in here with your paintbrush with the tip of it. See, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And I'm just gonna like highlight that face a little more. I wanna give it some life. See, put the eye really dark. So if you have anything to focus on, it would be the face and get more intense um, detail right around the face. The rest of it can kind of be blurry, but I would focus on all around the face. And why is that? It's just gonna enhance the sheep a little more. See, I'm just adding really tiny marks out here, get that dark color right under this chin here. And again, you can take this little peony brush and just make these little teeny marks. See I'm doing that? Little sheepy marks, wispy. It's just gonna add a little something, something. Color up here. Don't want it to look too weird, so I wasn't gonna make it too dark. But you want some color up in the ears and around in here and upward down on here. So with the little brush, you can just go in and put little fur details. Again, just like the pen pencil, but with the brush. See? It's just gonna add some more fine elements to it. 
I think my leg got lost in the crowd, but that's okay. Again, I'm not getting worried about it. So I'm just taking the fine brush as well and making some fine watercolor marks all around his body. Okay, while well, that's drying, this is still kind of damp, but we can go in and add some of those grasses, again with the same yellow ochre color, and we're gonna just be wisping up like this with this little teeny brush. It's a little time consuming, but it would be worth it. So I have the yellow ochre color. I'm gonna go right through down here. See I'm whispering this way and this way. Get even lighter, water it down, and do some ones out here. Because remember we wanted it lighter on the background. You might want to add a little water to it too to motion around a little more. We're just basically putting in grass. The feeling of grass. See, just wisping up that color. You want to add some grays and browns to that too to change it up. So it's not just this yellow color because um, then it doesn't look monotonous in tone. Just going to go wisping around. Wisping through the grass. That's what this little guy is doing. He's hanging out in the grass. So you kind of want to put the grass right over all this stuff down here. See, I'm getting some darker tones. Wisp, 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 even right next to your... Um, oh my God, I can't think today. Masking fluid. We can go back in with some lighter ones with some white gouache too. So don't get freaked out if you don't have enough lighter grasses going through. So I'm going to stop that. What I'm going to tell you is just keep doing that until you feel like you're ready to stop. And that will be when you know. You want them crisscrossing, going back and forth. You don't want them all going one way. The grasses are supposed to be wild, so they're going to go left. They're going to go right. They're going to go straight. Get some darker tones. You see me putting in some darker tones here. Look again. Just make them go left, right, back and forth, up and down. Coming out of this little section here. It's just going to add another element. And then we're going to go right onto the sky. Take some of the screen up. I'm going to move back. So um, I want like a pale blue. Maybe like kind of like ultramarine. I'm going to get rid of some of the screen up here. I have my indigo. I can add a little magenta to that. If you have an ultramarine, you're good to go. I might not even add peacock blue to that. I'll just get some nice blue going here. Although I think that blue might be a little too dark. So I might change it up. <laughs> I'll just take my paper towel and swipe up all that color. Okay. So let's start off with the peacock mixed with some grays and Yeah, I want the sky mysterious, but light blue. Or I could even use this beautiful Verdier blue that I have, which is nice. I can go in there and throw that into the mix. So what I'm going to do is grab a nice fluffy brush that I have, clean water, and go around. Be careful going around my little lamblet. You might want to, you could tape down this whole painting. I didn't tape it down. So we're going to hit all the areas in and not the lamb. This is how you can avoid using a masking fluid on the lamb itself. And I'm just going to go up here, fill it all in. Make sure you see where you filled, missed it. So you kind of just turn your paper and you see where the sheen is not happening on your paper and you can just kind of fill that in with the water. Just look where the sheen is. Wherever the sheen is not, there is no water. But don't be fearful. You can always just add it. So I'm going to go in and grab some of this blue, this pretty blue mixed in with the other blues. Let's see what we got. 
Oh, pretty. You can just start by um, swooshing it on the top and having it bleed down or move it all down yourself. So let me do that. You just hold it on the top and you just hold your paper like this and just keep adding some color. And wherever it's wet, it should fall right down into it. If not, you just kind of move it around. So I'm just going to kind of move it around. I'm going to just manipulate it. Just a pretty blue right to the sheep guy. Careful not to hit him. That might get a little too bright. So I'm going to add some gray in there. And if you don't want it to be the same color blue, go in and put whatever color you want. I like that Bordier blue. It's just really bright and fun and pretty. So you see how it's the paper is kind of buckling a little bit? It eventually will fall flat. And if it doesn't, you can always iron the back of your paper with a flat iron on a low dose heat, and it should do the same thing. It's a little trick. All right. So pretty much, like I don't want the sky to be like really intense. If you want to put clouds in, you can. I actually don't. I'm going to add some darker color a little bit down here. Playing around with moving color around. I'm adding some grays and browns kind of to this color over here. It still should bleed nicely since it's very wet. And a little bright blue around him. Wait till this is dry and then we'll go and take up the masking fluid. All right, so once that's dry, you can take your rubber cement pickup. You see that? You get all those cute little marks that you made with the masking fluid. It just makes it easier, right? It's a lot of fun when you can do that. I use my rubber cement pickup for that. And you can see all the highlights on the grasses. You can tone some of them down if you wanted to. Um, with your color here. It's a lighter. We'll keep some of them really on the lighter side. See how they're over that green? Taking that yellow ochre color. And you go right over that green. And I just go over the color a little bit, not all of it. So it's lighter than that green that we had. Keep some of the intense white. I think it's like a nice contrast. And then again, you're just gonna go back in and you, for your grasses, you're gonna just throw in some darker tones. Get some grays and browns. Wisp up. right next to the grass in the background. Kind of keep playing around to you. You're kind of satisfied how it looks with the grass. That's pretty much it. So around here I got a little light, but that's how I wanted it. I have a little cauliflower edge. I can just take my brush and go in and just grab some water and kind of push that paint around so it doesn't have that like weird hard edge and lift some of that up. There. Doesn't look wonky and weird. But that's pretty much how we're going to do our woolly guy. And if you want to go back in again with your pencil or, you know, take your take your time with the little skinny uh, number four brush. I'm going to go in and go in and add some little teeny, you know, squiggle wiggle of the fur, the wool going down here, not fur, but, well, I guess it is kind of their fur, but it's, it's wool, it's not fur. So we make our sweaters out of, <laughs> and I'm just going to go and just wiggle in some darks, some nice dark rays all around back here and down on the leg. It's just going to give it that extra something special. But this is just a little more extra time consuming. You don't need to see me painting all that. 
I'm just going to fill that. And there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little lamb tutorial. Don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And don't forget, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic day, guys. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.